Check. Here we go. Back with another Behind the Pads, episode 19. It's 2020. Happy New Year. And I'm here in the studio, rocking it. Today, I'm going to be doing um, a little bit of a different approach. I mean, yeah, it's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to be chopping up a sample on this setup. And then I'm going to take it over to my drum set and kind of adapt it that way so that I'm going to do a live performance instead of just playing the actual drums. I'm going to make it so that part of me is playing real drums and the other part is doing the sample chops. So I figured, you know, go with the old here and just at least chop the sample here and then we'll move it over to the other station. Okay, dope. So now, as you see, I got my... Drums there, and the sample on pad five. Boom. And I'm just going to go straight in and chop. I know, like, at, like even though I wrote lyrics to it, I kind of had an idea in mind with the sample itself. Um, but again, it was just such a simple loop that I'm not sure that it's going to get too complicated with the actual chop. So uh, I'm probably better off keeping it simple because I'm going to be sitting behind a drum kit as well. And I don't want to be like this one band, <laughs> one man band thing here, but um, it's so fun playing the machine with my drum kit. No other way to put it. All right, so let's see here. All right, I'm going to make sure this is in choke group number one and that it's set to... 0% in my velocity destination, one shot, I might uh, soften that, little filter, and let's see the engine for a sec, ooh, I like that, that S1200 engine. kind of a weird chop because so I wonder if I'd be better off if I'd be better off actually speeding the sample up right now. So let's get rid of those pads, go back to the original sample here, and I'm gonna go in and just hit stretch, settings, and let's go free mode, formant, and maybe I will go up like to 120%. Let's just mess with that for a moment. Might take a second to load it because it's a nine minute track. I didn't even realize it's a nine, actually it's 10 minutes long. All right. Let's see. 
I can't even tell if I hit. Yeah, okay, it's loading. It's loading. Yeah, while this is loading, I'll talk a bit about the routing here for a moment. Um, as usual, I got my mic plugged into my interface and running machine standalone application and its own internal interface through the SP back into the main interface. Uh, and I'm also running a screen recording this time, hoping, 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 hoping that it doesn't glitch because every now and again it glitches. So, and it really messes up the sync for everything, but we'll see what happens. I also have Ableton running, which is actually recording all of this now. So the stereo output of the SP and my microphone are both being recorded through that. Woo! That's better. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to find these, like, just the right spots to cut it so I can kind of play that, you know, one every, uh, every bar where it's like, boom. So I'm just chopping through. Finding those right moments. there but so I'm gonna find another part in the song that Okay, dope. So that's actually kind of working out. I'm noticing that the hi-hat's a little bit um, off, which is dope, but I think in this instance, I don't want any space before the transient, just so that it's a sharp attack, especially when I'm sitting behind the kit. That's going to be kind of my my um, like internal meter is going to be my hi-hat. So I wanted to make sure that I'm hitting it when I'm actually hitting it. So... Um, Okay, dope. Now, uh, I'm going to duplicate this entire group over, and what that'll allow me to do is, like usual, get rid of all the existing pads except the last one, so I can use that as my starting point now for the next thing. There's another really cool part. Oh, there it is. Oh!
sharper on that attack. And then, okay, so I already know that I'm kind of at the end of that group, so I'm feeling like I should make my transitional pads now. So I know that I want it to end after that fill, so just before this transient. A little clicky there, but same thing. Let's zoom in all the way. Might have to look at my screen for this one to find that. That's better. Boom. Hit that zero crossing point, and there's no click or pop. All right, so I can just truncate that, and I can do the same for that one, I think. Uh, no, no, it's going to be on this pad. That's actually the end of the phrase here. So, because this is pretty much the same samples, but uh, from different parts in the actual verse itself, uh, just to give a little bit of variance. But this is going to be that second half of that part. So this is actually my tra transition pad right here. Mm. So right before beat one there. Another one of these. Not bad. We'll we'll take that. Okay, so that's truncated and that's truncated. So that, then. Uh, Okay, cool. So that's the transitional pad. Boom. And now we're in another group. So I'm going to do the same thing where I delete all of these. Copy this one over. Delete. Boom. Okay. So let's see what else is in the song. I mean, that shit is groovy, but I'm probably not going to flip that. Well, I think, you know, I think it's just going to stay the two groups here and let's maybe just start, uh, let's start fucking with adding some zones in there. Okay. Let's see. I'm already noticing that like the one thing about this sample is that it's already got some bass in it and some really cool sounds. So I'm not sure that there's a ton that I want to add. Um, you know, I might layer in like a space effect or something. Let's see. I'm, you know what I might have to do right now is I think a smart move would be to go straight up and comb through these samples right away right now and truncate them all because, you know, it's a 10 minute track and I'm only using such a small part of it. So I'm just going to go in and literally truncate each one super short to where I know 
I ain't gonna be using it past. This is a little painstaking to do it this way. I should have checked the sample before, but when you're inspired, you just go with it. <laughs> so do the same thing, just keep on truncating. And this will free up some space and CPU probably, so it's a good move. Present stuff is hooking up future stuff, so I don't have issues when I'm playing this live or something, you know? I'm gonna have to do it for the next group too. Oh my God, so much better. It's gonna be so much better. Whether that helped my CPU or not, whatever, I just know for sure that I don't wanna have a copy of a 10 minute sample on every pad right here, that's insane. So moving forward, let's try and go back here and add a zone, maybe a little siren. Always down with that. And maybe we'll try to add on that pad just um, that ice effect. A delay could work too, but it might delay too much of the actual sample. But if I make the color up like this. You hear that tail right away, but I can go. Ah, I needed to reach the point of. I could mess with that for sure. I'm into it. Let's see. Um, you know, I think it's time to to switch over to the drum kit maybe. That's a good move right now. And just start to mess with that because this is a whole other, whole other beast once we get that going. So I'm going to sign off on this station real quick. Thanks so much for coming back and watching this episode. If you look below in the description, there's links to a bunch of the gear I use and they're all affiliate links. The affiliate link just allows me to get a small percentage of that sale from that company. In this case, Native Instruments, if you buy something from them. And uh, yeah, there's links in the description of all the gear I'm using and to all my music if you're not familiar i'm part of a crew called rare sounds it's a collective based out of windsor and detroit rare sounds we pump out music like crazy and a ton of content put on shows and creative events and just a lot of cool shit is happening in this part of the world for sure so please go check out the other guys music i got Instagram handles for all of the peeps below. Our Spotify playlist link is below. Follow that, like it, share it, do what you got to do if you fuck with it. So lastly, uh, if you're in the Toronto area, I'm playing a show January 18th with my good friend and uh, longtime music collaborator, Pat Robitaille, at a spot called Burdock Brewery. Super dope spot. I'll put the ticket link below uh, for advanced tickets and uh, it would be cool to see some peeps out. I think that's it. Uh, I'm going to move to the drum station. Until next time, peace, yo. Okay, dope. So uh, now I'm in this station, and you can see that it's just a uh, straightforward setup, kick, snare, hat, and I got some tambourine stacked on there, But uh, and the machine in the center. It's, uh, yeah, I kind of spent uh, the last two hours almost uh, just getting the whole pattern down with playing the drums and then yeah it was a it was kind of a challenge no doubt for sure it was a major challenge actually now that I'm just saying it aloud um I definitely ran into a few issues where I needed to pitch the sample down a step because uh at the beginning of the episode I was talking about wanting to speed it up a little bit but 
in the end, it felt a little too fast and a little bit too high out of my register. So I pitched it down one step and um, I didn't change any of the chops. They stayed the exact same. So I'm going to run a bunch of takes here, hopefully only a handful and get a, get something good. But damn, I had fun making this one this time. This was a, like I said, it was a challenge, but oh, it's so fun mixing organic elements with something digital yet it's still so organic because you're playing it it's really crazy it's a beautiful thing if you got a machine and you have a drum kit i highly recommend trying this setup out it's wildly fun i'll, I'll maybe go through my drum sounds real quick Whoo! that snare sounds so nice right now So fun. Okay, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try getting some takes. Whoo! Okay. Right here. Whoo! 